Oh, we it's need to <laughs> pull up my car. Cause it's, you know, me and Big Dane were talking and it's like, I never build myself anything. Hmm. The story of those who began their business with loans always ends up being an interesting one. And that of Ryan Freelinghouse isn't any different. Ryan Freelinghouse and Quentin Dodson founded West Coast Customs in 1993 to compete with other car shops. According to Ryan, he started the business with a loan from his grandfather, while other sources revealed he raised the money while working for his grandfather. Owing to the patronage of celebrities such as Shaquille O'Neal and Sean Combs, along with appearances in the reality television programs Pit My Ride and Street Customs, the company has gained a high degree of notoriety and has become a multi-million dollar business. Besides celebrities, West Coast Customs has also created vehicles for global brands such as Virgin, Nintendo, and Microsoft. It's arguably one of the best custom car shops in America, which is why we bring to you what happened to Ryan from inside West Coast Customs. Let's dive in. I'm Ryan Friedlinghouse, founder and CEO of West Coast Customs, LA's one-stop shop for custom car builds. Born on April 22, 1975 in California, United States, Ryan Friedlinghouse has managed to limit the information about his family only, but there was little he could do about his grandfather, who played a great role in the success of his business. According to multiple sources, he started working with his grandfather at 18, where he saved up $5,000 to start his car shop. According to another source, his grandfather lent him $5,000 to start the car shop business. After he got his startup capital, Ryan started West Coast Customs at a young age, and his first project soon came in, which was a Mazda car that he customized to showcase his abilities. Ryan's West Coast Customs was first opened in Laguna Niguel in Orange County in 1994, and in 1998, they moved to Compton. In 2000, they moved to Inglewood, but they are presently in Corona, California, operating as a subsidiary of Carroll Shelby International, Inc. Just like other car shows, which entails showcasing your skills to the world and possibly landing a TV gig, Ryan soon got noticed after his exploits and was offered a contract to host a reality TV show, Street Custom, and Inside West Coast Custom on TLC and the Discovery Channel. The Inside West Coast Custom Show premiered in January 2011, and the second season began on February 12, 2012, while the third season, which is also the last season of the show, was aired on March 10th. Prior to his fame on national TV, Ryan has had some rough starts. Ryan's car shop once partnered with the popular Pimp My Ride. After four years of partnership, West Coast Customs broke up with MTV, and in 2011, it debuted a new show called Inside West Coast Customs, and it ran all the way till 2018, changing networks and finally landing on Discovery's Motor Trend. After this, the show featured some celebrities, some of which are Justin Bieber, Post Malone, Shaquille O'Neal, The Jonas Brothers, Travis Scott, Kid Rock, Chris Brown, and Mark Wahlberg. West Coast Customs is frequently characterized as one of the best custom car shops in the United States. However, the company has also at times been accused of missing deadlines, using aggressive sales tactics, and producing low quality and potentially unsafe customized vehicles. Some observers and past employees have also criticized the company's employment practices. One of the criticisms Ryan's car shop got was that USA Today revealed in 2008 that Ryan's auto shop routinely had 60-hour work weeks and employees had insane deadlines working for him, a self-described micromanager. One former employee, Mauricio Hernandez, who would go on to co-found the Mexican franchise of WCC, also confirmed this claim in an interview with NPR that during the period of his employment at the California branch, I worked 10 to 12 hours per day, six days per week as an undocumented worker, without social security or any other benefits, and that by so doing, I miss the childhood of my kids. It seems Ryan is also aware of this, and he's not denying it since he said in an interview when asked, what does it take to be an employee at West Coast Customs? Ryan replied, not saying, when do I go home? The guys who want to stay and work and get things done, it's hard to find good people, people who will do whatever we ask them to do. However, in April 2014, an investigation by the United States Department of Labor found Ryan's company to have violated the provisions of the Fair Labor Standards Act. The government found that the company was not paying employees overtime or minimum wage, nor keeping proper records. During the investigation, the government found that all employees were paid a weekly salary, regardless of how many hours they worked. 
Because employees were frequently coerced to work overtime, this resulted in a wage of $6 per hour for some employees. Furthermore, until 2011, the company attempted to skirt minimum wage and overtime laws by classifying their on-site exclusive long-term employees as independent contractors, which is illegal in the United States. When presented with the opportunity to go to court or pay the fine assessed by USDOL, Ryan chose to pay the fine, which amounted to $157,592 in back wages for the wronged employees and $16,830 in civil penalties. In an interview after the fine was paid, Daniel Pascal, the director for the Wages and Hours Division of the West Covina Office of the USDOL, noted that the most important thing is that the company did correct the violations and they are now in full compliance. Aside from mistreating employees, West Coast Customs also has a record of quality issues. There have been several high-profile incidents of quality issues from Ryan's company. A viral case was that of Trisha Paytas, a singer-songwriter and internet personality in 2015, who had her three-week-old 2014 Mercedes-Benz G-Wagon customized by West Coast Customs. According to standard operations, the customer has to give full details of what they want, which Trisha Paytas did. She said, I request that the car be painted pink, that Swarovski crystals be integrated into the headrest and steering wheel, and that the floor mats be changed out with customized ones. After bringing in the vehicle, I was promised that it would be ready by November 17th, but the company missed both that deadline and a further one on December 9th. After the second deadline was missed, I uploaded a vlog to YouTube about my experience, and West Coast Customs threatened me with a lawsuit if I refused to remove it. After so much hassle, Ryan and his employees honored the December 17th deadline, but things went bad afterwards. When Paytas came to pick up the vehicle, she found that none of the electronic components worked, including those that are required for safety in the United States, such as turn signals, headlights, and windshield wipers. Furthermore, the dashboard instruments did not function. Paytas forwarded a complaint to them but was told to drive the car home and then to the Mercedes-Benz dealership from which they bought it to ask them for an in-warranty repair. Paytas resorted to using her vlog to bring such unprofessional acts to the public's notice, and instead of a lawsuit from West Coast Customs, they opted to upload their own vlog in the form of a scrolling text public relations statement. In the statement, besides denying that they had talked down to Paytas, West Coast Customs denied that its customization was the reason for the issues with the vehicle and claimed that the car was late because they had changed what they had ordered several times. They also denied that they had ignored Paytas and even invited Paytas to contact them with any further requests or complaints for an immediate resolution. Similarly, in 2015, the Huffington Post interviewed three people who were participants on Pimp My Ride, one of whom had a vehicle that was pimped during the time that the location of the show was West Coast Customs. Just like that of the songwriter, the car pimp was full of errors, aside from the fact that it was in the shop for around one and a half years. According to the source, when the muffler was removed, three fake exhaust pipes were substituted instead. These were used to make the engine sound much more powerful to viewers of the television show, but they made the car needlessly loud. It was also claimed that very little or no mechanical work was done to the car, to the extent that the client had trouble driving it home from the show set. Due to all the mechanical trouble, one month after acquiring the car from West Coast Customs, the client sold it to the MTX Audio for $18,000. Controversies aside, Ryan has made a robust net worth for himself and his family, running West Coast Customs and hosting reality TV shows. As of October 2022, Ryan Friedling House is allegedly worth $15 million with other notable investments like house and car collections. While there is little to no information on Ryan's current whereabouts, as he seems to be very private on social media, he's usually present on Instagram, posting on the latest bills from West Coast Customs. So, it's very much likely that he has taken a backseat at the custom house, and being a family man, Ryan is dedicating more of his time to family and helping his children flourish in their businesses. Ryan is sure good at what he does, and his achievements are there to speak for him, but the controversies surrounding him are just too many to be ignored. We hope he retraces his steps and make things right before it affects his business, or what do you think?